Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hey, it is Shooter Scott Henderson. It is June 23rd, <clears throat> Sunday. Uh, we are going to go over swing trade notes for a week ending uh, June 28th. Of course, the positions that we like going into the week, into earnings, etc. Of course, at the end of our presentation, please do review our disclosures. Okay, let's jump right into it. H had a halfway decent week last in swing trade notes, roughly a gain of $726 contract. I'll take that any week. Now, you're your own captain. You decide your risk. Talking about it briefly, real quick. You have a $500,000 account. Um, typically, you're going to take a maximum position size of 8%. Okay. Now I have a rule on that 8%, meaning I have to have had traded that symbol in the last two years and been successful 100% of the time to put on that risk. So to a certain degree, I'm only risking what I always refer to as house money. Most of the positions you want to cap to three to 5% of your total account size. So on a $500,000 account, 3% would be a $15,000 position size total, 5% would be $25,000 position size, all right, max, okay, when you're looking at those numbers. Now, what I suggest in chat is that you cap your risk to 50% of your investment, or you're going to scale in with a strategy. Obviously, you're your own captain, that's your choice. Now, uh, we do have uh, TLT still open in chat um, or in swing trade notes, uh, long 100 January calls, and then we still have Marvel, July 7750s. We're a little upside down on those. May take some August 75s to try and offset that a little bit because we're a little upside down. Um, actually, I let those run uh, because we had such a decent week. Um, I wanted to keep, I, I think Marvel gets above that breakout line. It's trading right in that range, that tight little flat that we're in. I think it does break out. So this upcoming week, what I really like is FDX. Let's, you know, FedEx reports Tuesday after close. I like the July 19th, 270 calls. I don't want to go out to August because I think it's too much for earnings this week, Tuesday the 25th. Uh, expected move is 6.7%. So I, I look at this three ways. In option strat, optionstrat.com, you can go and you don't need to pay for it. Put in FDX, click the tab up at the top of the screen that says optimize, and it'll give you their best suggested plays. I like the inverse iron condor, okay, but to be very candid, this has been a very challenging summer with this heat wave and humidity. I'm not sleeping well, so that's a little more complicated than I want to put my mind into right now. I'm keeping it very simple because I'm having a hard time getting up in the morning because I'm not sleeping. So it doesn't mean you're not in a better position because it is probably the most prudent trade. Um, it's posting about 150% gain on risking $900, which basically is one contract uh, in each of those, uh, you know, basically you're buying four positions. So four different strikes <clears throat> on either side of the tape. Um, I also consider a straddle here. However, realize FedEx does not meet the expected move or has not met the expected move 74% of the time. So it's not a prime candidate. Typically, I want it to hit the expected move more than 60% of the time for me to look at a straddle. That's not the case. However, I wanted to explain the straddle in my thinking. So I like the July 19th, 270 calls because it happens to be right in the price. But that inverse iron condor is probably a smarter move for people who have the ability to manage that. Okay. This week, I don't. So we're not going in that direction. All right. So looking at Disney. Now we have this extended leg down. We have Confirmed low and a divergent low right here on the daily meets criteria. We basically have this gap over here that we came down and filled. Now we got another gap up here. So I think that gap is very viable around 110 from 102. We have to get above this breakout and get some euphoria. We got some nice volume coming in. Um, however, we don't have this look yet. This look is what I want to see. I want to see that volume come in. Maybe the first candle, we get another bigger candle comes in as a explosion and a breakout, and then one more big, huge candle, and then we get that push. We should gap up, I think. Um, now, I don't know what the catalyst is going to be there, but I like August 105s. I want to be conservative. We're at 102, so I'm only looking for about three bucks to the upside. You know, looking for that 30 to 50% gain with the potential of an extended or an elongated ABC. All right. So we have A, B, C. Now, the problem with this count is this could be a five wave down. This could be wave one. I mean, this could be wave one. This could be wave three. And then we get a wave five here. So if we get price rejection, it's going to be right at that breakout line, about 103.50. So based on volume, we want to really watch that. Uh, you know, when we get up towards that breakout line, we want to watch volume there. <clears throat> if we have a euphoric move in volume, we get a nice candle and they're chasing it and looking at the options, et cetera. I'll try and post it in chat. 
But that's sort of my thinking. Just like Dell. This looks just like Dell and Dell moved off of this look. So 50% back to me is that 108.10 area. At the beginning of the gap, I think it at least gets to the 61.8. More than 50% back of the gap is my thought. So I think we can ride this out a little bit. And that's sort of my thought there. Now, below 100, I would take the stop and get out. That's what I would do. All right, so Home Depot. Now, we have a number of catalysts here. First of all, we have huge flooding in South Florida from tropical moisture. We have the first name storm that went into Mexico. So the Gulf of Mexico is really active. We have 86 degrees in the Straits, which I is really south of Cuba, talking you know, a little quick right here on this, um, are supposed to have a historic hurricane season. So this 400 is very viable. However, right now, I'm just looking for this ABC. Looks like we're going to break out and leg up, okay? First name storm, this thing could push right to 405. So we have to get into July. Realize that we're not the most, we're at the beginning of the season. And there's usually a little gap, okay? Then we have a lot of storms that run up the East Coast in July, early July. And then towards the end of July, we start getting more storms that maybe are heading towards the mainland, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we even have some more storms happening south of Mexico because of the water temperature. But realize we have a hot spot right in the middle of the Gulf. So if that starts developing storms and we all of a sudden have a period of two or three named storms, okay, heading towards Florida, South Florida specifically, draw a line across <clears throat> Orlando. If it's in the projected map, South side of Florida, it is a category four storm or above. <clears throat> okay, we got a very active period. We have a lot of storms that just have blown off towards the end of July. Then I'm going to look at those 400 January calls. Right now, I like August 365 because this is just a swing to that B. And I don't really like the way this looks, but I think this becomes an impulse leg up to that five. <clears throat> All right, so we got this A, excuse me, A, B, C. So it's telling me we're gonna flush back to 321. And that's one reason I was very cautious here, you know, in volume. And, you know, I, I really regret, you know, in about six, seven weeks ago, I posted a similar chart to this. I said it might be done at 32377. Well, I should have listened to my own advice and I should have bought some calls there because I didn't. And we ran 35 bucks. <laughs> um, you know, I'm right and then I'm wrong. And honestly, I was looking at this as an October trade. That was where my bias was. My, my, sometimes I just get so hung up on my bias and sometimes I'm wrong. You know, I'm, I'm you know, the game plan here again is to put on 100 trades, be right 75% of the time in direction where 50% of those or more are 30, 50, 75, or 100% gains and the rest of them are break even. And we cap our losses to a max of 25%. That's criteria which is why I like to focus on the 50% back. This is the next leg. This is a continuation leg. So in other words, the 50% back worked. It has not broken down. It has back tested the breakout. Now we're putting a you know, high, high in five here. We're looking at continuing to break out. And I would expect us to gap pretty quick Monday. Um, I will be very disappointed if we don't jump right up to 360 by the end of trading Monday or Tuesday morning. So uh, this is an early morning trade. So at the morning, wait five minutes decide what position you're going to take. Same thing with Disney, okay? Same thing with FDX, okay? Monday morning, five minutes. Let, let the options price settle and decide what you're going to take. Now, I also like shop for continuation. August, $70 calls. My stop is at 63 bucks. Closes below 63 bucks. I'm out. This is going to leg a little bit lower. We got our initial swing long, and this was a position I didn't enter, but it was posted in swing trade notes. <clears throat> and I like it for continuation. Now it looks like it's going to be a five wave. Shoot it head up towards about 78 bucks on our intermediate wave three. So I'm still looking at retagging this 50% back. So I'm not looking for a lot. $70 calls, three bucks, four bucks. If it runs, great. If it breaks down, no, take my stop, move it. Confirmed low, divergent low. I like the way that look is. So I think we do fill the gap. I think worst case scenario, we fill 69, 61, all right? Which is one reason I priced at 70. I want to buy the time. I want to give it some time in case we build out a little flat here and don't go for two or three or four weeks. But I think shops business is performing a little bit better. So that's my thought. Uh, that's what we have for this week, folks. Now, one quick thing. I just want to go to disclosures a second because the FTC rule, I've revised this. So I suggest that all of you review this. Now, I want to talk about hypothetical and simulated performance. What I do in my Elliott Wave counts is hypothetical and it is simulated, right, based on the prior history of Elliott Wave and other technical analysis on sport resistance, fib extensions, et cetera, right? So I am quite simply guessing, right, based on the collective of that information on where we might go, right? 
There are times when my system works well all the time. In other words, I've had periods where I've had, I'm right 100% of the time. Other times I'm right 70% of the time. Other times I'm right 50% of the time. When I'm below 50%, I am reducing my positions across the board. I'm going to go back and just address risk management. Again, position size, 3 to 5% is the max I really feel you should be doing, max or half that size until you get good at it. Really sort of adopt my thesis, my theme, my strategy. And I want you to mitigate your risk by position size. So when it is working, you add, right? Let me use CRM as an example. I doubled my position size in CRM, but I didn't post in chat. The reason was is because the balance I was looking at in my PL uh, for swing trade notes, I don't want to post something in the room that might put you in a situation where you end up losing for the week. So I want to mitigate my risk. <clears throat> Just like AST. Basically, I held some of the $15 calls. I plan to add to those. But in chat, I posted that we were stopped. In so at times, I'm going to be in positions you're not going to be in. If I, I don't want to take weekly positions in these market conditions right now in fundamental trends, because I think it's going to add to your risk. Doesn't mean I'm not in that position. It just means I'm not in that exact same position, maybe. Or I may be in shorter duration calls, putting more risk on because my risk model allows that. And that's why I encourage you to adopt your own risk model and understand that this is a projection. I just want to be clear. I could be wrong on 100% of my setups this week. I could be wrong on 100% of my setups next month. I don't think that's going to be the case. I, I think, you know, History proves that I'm, I've never been that bad. <laughs> uh, maybe foolish in a couple positions because I get over, you know, the FOMO gets me, all right? I, I'm just like everybody else. <clears throat> I don't want to miss out, all right? But at the same time, I don't want to take a loss either. So, you know, plus a majority of my positions are scalping. I'm just focused, just because of market conditions. Whenever, you know, really starting after the October sell-off, I've been scalping really 90% of my work has been right there simply because market conditions are very limited on the long positions, and which is why I like the 50% back. So I'm looking for a good flush, get those positions long, get my piece for the fun fundamental trends for the group for swing trade notes, and get the heck out. And I just wanted to share that with you folks. If you have any questions in the future about that, or you would like me to do, uh, you know, which I probably will try and do one between now and the second week of July, after we come back from the July 4th, do a maybe a little session on risk management, um, on how to set those up and do a question and answer session on that. Uh, because we're going to enter a, a more challenging period of time, the longer the Fed stalls. And unfortunately, we could be stalled where we are or in the range or a flat in the indices for months. I hope to God we don't get there. I hope we continue to see the volume. But you know, the low volume climb that we're seeing is indicative of push, retrace, push, retrace. So we build off this flat. And, you know, that requires a little more due diligence on your part as far as position size, risk management, et cetera. So I think we want to build on that theme. I'll end that. As Roscoe says, it's time to go. Just go out for a walk. Great trading. Until next time.